So the Galactic Empire is an authoritarian dictatorship. It wasn't really good for anyone other than the people at the top. However, interestingly enough, much of the galaxy wasn't very opposed to the Empire at the time of its founding. Today we'll take a look at how exactly Palpatine had convinced the galaxy to accept the Galactic Empire. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So the Galactic Empire is an oppressive dictatorship, ruling the galaxy with an iron fist, and ultimately controlling systems through fear. It wasn't really good for most of the citizens of the galaxy, especially if you weren't human. But how exactly did the galaxy come to accept the Galactic Empire's rise, and not just immediately rise up and overthrow it? Well, that's some interesting trickery played by Palpatine in the later days of the Republic. First things first, we have to understand that much of the galaxy really wasn't a fan of the Republic. The Republic had made quite a few enemies, even within the systems that had not decided to join the CIS. A lot of the problems that drove systems to leave the Republic during the Clone Wars still caused a lot of strife within the systems that decided to remain. The general consensus among the population of the galaxy is that the Senate was corrupt. Some believed they existed within the pockets of large corporations, while others simply believed that they only cared about the core worlds. As a result, a lot of systems, especially ones further from the core, felt like the Republic still didn't represent them, even if they chose to remain on the side of the Republic during the war. So there's already this sort of underlying distrust of the Republic among galactic citizens. But the war also played a massive role in the public's willingness to accept the Empire. The galaxy had seen firsthand the devastation of disunity. They had seen what was essentially a massive civil war. This breakaway faction had separated from the Republic and ravaged the galaxy for years. Many planets near the Outer Rim had been sacked by the CIS, and even core worlds like Coruscant had fallen under attack, their population seeing firsthand the devastation that war can bring. So it is understandable that much of the galaxy was sort of hungering for peace. They wanted a galaxy that was less dangerous than the galaxy during the Clone Wars. So in a lot of ways, the Galactic Empire promised some sort of unity. If the central galactic government was stronger, they could have theoretically kept the Separatists from leaving. At least, that's the argument that was made. And that a newer, stronger government put in place at the end of the war, the Galactic Empire, would be more effective at preventing a rebellion or an uprising like what was seen during the Separatist Crisis. As we know, that doesn't go over very well in 20 years down the line, well, we see how that ends. But at the time, that's the argument that was fed to the population of the galaxy. That the Galactic Empire meant stability. That the Galactic Empire was the best bet for preventing a second war like the one that the galaxy had just endured. And add to that the fact that much of the galaxy didn't care. A lot of worlds in the farther reaches of the galaxy, like the Outer Rim, had minimal contact with the Core Worlds. Ultimately, the Republic barely had an influence on their lives. For example, look at the state of Tatooine during the Naboo Crisis. The Republic barely has any control out there, and so it's not surprising that a lot of these people really don't care about the state of galactic politics. It doesn't feel like it affects them directly. Hearing that the Republic has been replaced by the Empire just means more of the same. So for those that really understood what was going on, the Empire was this beacon of stability, and for those who were distant, it didn't matter. As I mentioned, those in the middle who were maybe uncertain about the integrity of the Republic maybe saw the Empire as a more stable option. A stronger central authority, after all, might be able to crack down more on corruption. And then there were the few systems that actually did stand up against the Empire. These are mostly Separatist holdouts, but a few of them really did hold Republic ideals. We see planets that had their own defense forces, many of which sided with the Separatists during the war, still trying to stay independent during the days of the Empire. Now, this is why in the early days of the Galactic Empire, we see a massive campaign against Separatist holdouts. And the presence of these Separatist holdouts added more credence to the sentiment that there was constantly the threat of another uprising. Seeing that there were places in the galaxy where people still held Separatist ideals and could find weapons to defend themselves against the Galactic Empire sort of added some legitimacy to the claim that the Empire was the only thing standing between the galaxy and another massive war. But on top of all of this, at the start, the Galactic Empire didn't really seem that different from the Republic. After all, at its founding, it still had a Senate that was made up of a lot of the same Senators. So ultimately, the reason why the Galactic Empire was able to succeed and able to exist at all was the culture of fear that surrounded the Clone Wars and the immediate aftermath of them. It stemmed from a lot of systems being very tired of the way the galaxy had been run, either in the long term or even just over the last few years. A lot of factions welcomed the Empire and would ultimately regret that decision. But if you want to learn more about the crisis that led to the Clone Wars and ultimately made the Empire possible, I'll leave a link up here to my video on the Separatist Crisis which started the Clone Wars. And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think I missed any of the ways Palpatine tricked the galaxy into accepting the Empire. 
And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.